three sections today, and then you get an extra added bonus. So the three sections are just observations on uh, the current environment, and in fact, well, uh, 2011, really. Uh, I will spend a little bit of time contextualizing uh, performance. Uh, the third section will be a little bit of a, an expose on strategy that we uh, uh, embark upon along with the investment committee. Uh, and then the bonus is uh, an expose on uh, the uh, corporate social responsibility effort, which is integrated into our investment program. The right side of this graph, all the way up, is the tip of the iceberg. So the 2.11 is the tip of the iceberg. The fourth quarter of last year saved part of the stock market. We had a very big rally in the fourth quarter of 2011. And you might have read that the Standard & Poor's 500, which is the best known index for describing the performance of mostly domestic uh, companies here in the US, eked out a slight gain. In fact, it was really just the index itself in terms of price movement was exactly where it started 2011, despite all the drama. So it eked out again with dividends, because returns are a function of price appreciation and dividends, it did eke out again. However, so that's my point is that that's the tip of the iceberg. Underneath the waters, there was a lot of turmoil. So you can see as you move to the left, there are various indices around the world reflecting the price action of global equities, which were far worse. So right to the left of the 2.11%, the eking out of the gain, are indices which reflect smaller companies here in the US, which were down as close to 4%. Moving even further to your left, reflect uh, Morgan Stanley, EFI, which is Europe, Australasia, and Far East, uh, which are developed countries, Japan, uh, the UK, for example, uh, which were down uh, close to, as you can see, 12%, so again, underneath the surface. And far to the left were the fastest growing countries uh, around the globe, including China, Russia, India, India uh, Brazil, which were down 18%. I bring this up because you might ask the question, well, why don't we just invest in the S&P 500 stocks? Why don't we stay at home? It's a valid uh, point, I think, for 2011. However, uh, what I've described here and uh, graphed is the annualized returns over the prior 10 years preceding 2011. And you can see that this 2011 represented a real reversal of fortune. So emerging markets, as indicated before, that were the worst performers in 2011 were the best performers in the prior decade. So emerging markets, 13.86% annualized over the prior decade. I mean, those are some pretty good numbers. Russell 2000, which are the smaller companies here in the United States, 5.62% and, and so on and so forth. The point is that there are benefits of diversification over a long time frame and that our program in the equity investing world, while not uh, dipping all feet into global investing, does have an allocation of somewhere around 25% to global markets, trying to pick up the benefits of this slide over a period of time. A few more contextual pieces for you as we attempt to describe 2011. Not only were there headwinds in terms of the global environment, but even here in the United States, if you look at uh, managers who endeavor not to buy the index, but to you know, decide whether or not they're going to buy Facebook or Google or Coca-Cola or Pepsi, actively try to manage portfolios. And a good uh, portion of our program and our, the managers that we use really is inv are involved with actively selecting stocks. This slide basically shows you how difficult it was, even here in the United States, for active managers to purvey their, uh, their craft. And, you know, I can get into all of, the, all of the various reasons. I think that's sort of the fact of the matter is for this year, for 2011, it was a very difficult environment to beat the indices. And again, contextualizing it, you can see that only, if you go all the way over to the right here, some 20% of, of active managers were able to beat their indices, beat the S&P 500. You can see uh, that over a longer period of time, that this is an ebb and flow type environment, that there are periods of time when it's easier. The simplest way I can kind of describe this is that last year, for a number of reasons, stocks all kind of moved together because there was fear and greed in the market at various uh, points in time. And so 
In that kind of environment, it tends to be a little bit more difficult. I would point out, interesting period of time here, uh, 1997, 1998, that was really the last time we had a global currency crisis very similar to the environment that we have today. I've spoken a lot about stocks, and some of you may not care about stocks. Some of you may be in stable value or or bond and representing folks who are involved with more on the fixed income side of things. But I started in this business in 1981. Those of you who uh, remember 1981, you may remember that, you know, what mortgage rates were, you may remember what interest rates were, but this is kind of an amazing, this is the 10-year uh, government uh, bond yield, that's in 1860, and you can see the trajectory of interest rates, so this is sort of the average level, normal level of interest rates, but, uh, you know, in the 70s, uh, with the advent of inflation or so, you saw a real rise in bond yields up to uh, the 1981 period, and since 1981, Interest rates have done nothing, well, I should say nothing, but they generally have declined precipitously. So this is the kind of environment that we're, that we're in. And so you look at the 10-year rate that the U.S. government has to pay to borrow money from us. It is now, as we speak, it's somewhere around 1.63%, as opposed to 1981 when it was 15%. I mean, these are staggering numbers and present the challenges and context in which we manage uh, money on the members' behalf. On to a bit of time on performance. Uh, I want to talk about uh, 2011 and kind of the longer period and what we expect and maybe allude a little bit, Mike, to 2012. Generally, uh, the more exposed you were last year to fixed income, uh, to bonds, apropos of the graph I just showed you, the better off uh, you did. The stable value option, which is a part of our targeted annuitization funds and represents the most conservative and stable portion of our program, was up 2.5%. And you can see over the last five years, it's sort of been clicking along in, you know, in, the, in the mid threes, even in the period of very low interest rates. And remember that the level of risk here, in other words, the uh, number of years we will invest, so it's a very short time frame in which we will invest the money. But that's uh, clicking along reasonably nicely, and you can see how it compares to the level of uh, what you could get really in money market funds. Uh, you can see here the bond fund, again, the good news story for 2011 were the returns of bonds. And so you can see that the uh, terrific return of close to 7% for the bond fund represents really what it's uh, done over the last five years. You can see that you know, good return. I will just, again, provide context for the bond fund. Uh, what our uh, bond fund managers are trying to do is really not try to eke out the last bit of return from government bonds, which were the best performing sector last year. So gradually, we have been moving away from government bonds into corporate bonds to try to really protect the assets over the next couple of years in the possibility that interest rates rise. So you know, we got left behind the index a little bit, but as you can see, some terrific three-year numbers versus the index. So the next two lines are what I would deem a little bit of an unflattering view of our capabilities over 2011. And I say that partially because the setup that I gave you a little bit before, speaking about the difficulty of a global investment program in the context of a comparison to the standard course 500. And I say that in the vein of the difficulty of active managers to do their job. I also say that in the context of a really concerted effort over 2011 to communicate with the members and put that context into place. And so while I say this is a little bit of an unflattering comparison, It's one that we're comfortable living with over the short term and comparing ourselves to the standard Poor's 500, which was up 2% for the year, while our diversified equity program was down for the year. I don't want to say this is apples versus oranges. It's almost apples versus a bowl of fruit. As Marguerite Boslaw says, we should be able to outperform the standard Poor's 500 over the long term, which is what we have done. But over the short term, we continue to look for ways to improve our performance versus that bogey, but also to explain and contextualize what it is that we're doing. And we have a number of ways in which we can describe that more fully, and that we will continue to look for ways to describe that difference over the year. Okay, so again, a little bit of an unflattering view, but it is what it is for the purposes of com- comparison sake. 
And similarly, the balance fund was up for the year, so benefited from the allocation to fixed income, but was uh, hurt a little bit by the performance on the equity side of things. But you can see the longer term performance is fairly decent. These are the target annuitization funds that basically did what they were supposed to do during the year. So as you near retirement, your program tends to get more conservative and more concerned with the preservation of capital. So we have a number of funds that target your annuitization date or your, your retirement date. So you can see that the 2015 fund, even in a tumultuous environment like 2011, particularly for equities, was actually up 3.5%. So your risk to capital as you near retirement was far less. Our view is that uh, this target annuitization uh, fund program is doing what it is designed to do. And then finally on performance, just to indicate that the participating annuity and the, and the basic annuity, which are, you know, assume a rate of return of 4% over a period of time, and, and that is indeed the target, but do fully participate in the ups and downs of the market. Be aware that the basic annuity, as you uh, very well know, it, know, is invested in a portfolio of uh, fixed income and, and bonds, and that the participating annuity is invested in a diversified portfolio of equities and, uh, and fixed income. You can see on the bottom the balance, uh, the equity benefit and the balance benefit were closed in April of 2006, but you can see the adjustments that were made uh, to those two programs.